Okay, um, I've changed the lighting, obviously. Um, so now you can see me way better, even though I have a gigantic bright light in my face. So, everybody, hello. Welcome back to another video. Uh, today's video is going to be about power steering. That's right, this video is about to spend a minute. Um, this video is going to be about power steering and how to replace the lower line, basically. So, if you're interested in that. These, these old body style Fords like this are a little bit different, so I wanted to go over them. Uh, just in a quick video. Plus, I'm I'm trying to be original and create original content now. And it's becoming difficult to find that. Um, I have a couple more videos coming out about some original stuff on these trucks that nobody's gone over that is pretty common practice. So, um, anyways, uh, what did you learn this week? Um, this week, I learned how to rebuild a weather guard toolbox, do the locks, the lock cylinders, and all that stuff on top of. Um, a couple other minor things, some diesel stuff for the diesel class I'm currently taking. So yeah, what did you learn? Let me know in the comment section. And uh, don't forget, guys, I always read. I read every comment. I may not reply to every comment, but I do read them. So if you comment, I will see it. So yeah, guys. So anyway, so that's what today's video is going to be about. It's going to be all about power steering, how to fill it, how to bleed it, all that good stuff. So I hope you enjoy, and I will see you guys at the end. Bye. Okay, everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, I have the transmission out, but that's not what we're going to be focused on today. Today, the, I've got a mess of a cart here where my tools are, but we're going to be focusing on the power steering. Um, if you own a truck of this body style, you know these are notorious for power steering issues, leaks and whatnot. Um, I have replaced the pressure hose, which would be this hose, but the low pressure line is still leaking. Um, I did replace it and plumb in my own, but it's still leaking. So I finally broke down and just bought one right here. So this is what the low pressure line is. If you have the 4x4 tow package truck, this is what it looks like. Uh, they have several variations of this, but uh, the part number that you need is 91846. So. Yeah, and I may, and I'll probably try to leave an Amazon link to this in the description below. But uh, basically, put your little catch can under there, and uh, go ahead and just drain it. Don't worry about that old fluid. Put whatever you put all these new lines in. Put new fluid in. Uh, it's not something that you want to. It's not something that you want to run old fluid in because that stuff breaks down over time, especially if you never replaced it. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the old fittings and lines. And then I'll come back and I'll show you exactly what I what I did. Okay, so a couple things to take note of. So if you'll notice, this little spout here is shorter than this one. That's because, uh, so the problem that I had is it was leaking from here, this one. And I tried cutting it off and I tried replacing it and it was still leaking because this line on the old one was all brittle and wore out. And you can't really replace them. On these, you can, because it has this little clamp. You can just take that clamp off and probably replace it with a standard hose clamp. But, the old ones had like an AC line crimp all the way around it. And I can't show it to you because I've already cut it off and thrown it away. But it had like an AC line crimp on it, and the only way I could do it was cut it and slide another piece over. But that made it like really short here, so it doesn't exactly fit up to the pump all the way. And of course, I'm getting fluid all over my freaking driveway. Put that rag there to catch some of it. Um... But yeah, so that was the problem I kept having. This part, part right here never leaked. Um, and the reason that I had to create this part is because whenever this thing's got 350,000 miles on it. So, if you'll look, I still have the little stub of the thread sticking out. And that's because the line was spinning with the fitting. And whenever that happens, the only thing that you can do is cut it and replace it. So... I was gonna replace it, and then I was like, "Well, this will be a little bit cheaper." I only spent three bucks on that on that one piece of rubber line. I should have bought more of it because I needed more to go on this lower piece, but it's fine. I figured I'll just break down and buy the right one because the problem was is it wasn't leaking from here anymore. It solved that issue, but it started leaking from here where I had made this new union. So. But the great thing about this one is if I ever want to replace this piece, I've got a couple pieces, and it's nothing but this, and I can just snip that off and replace it with a standard 
line and everything that it needs to be good again so uh, this thing's pretty easy to install uh, you're just gonna obviously if you have this you're gonna have to get that fitting out um, however you may have to uh, normally a lot a line if you don't have any any line wrenches I recommend buying some just for this job they're gonna if you go to Harbor Freight or or Seager, or uh, Lowe's I mean you can get them for like I don't know fifteen dollars a set which in the long run will pay off so I recommend doing that personally it's gonna help you out a lot especially for taking off both of those lines like that and uh, there's if you if you ever want to do brakes down the road plus if you're replacing the high pressure one there's another fitting right there that's got to be removed um, and removing that big one you can do it you can remove that big one and put it back in that's how I did this one because that one wouldn't budge and I didn't want to strip it um, but yeah I actually didn't buy this line brand new I found it at a junkyard but I mean it was it was brand new on the truck that was at the junkyard so I just kind of took it but yeah so I'm gonna get a socket over that and spin it out and then I'll go ahead and thread in my new line I'm gonna make sure that those fittings are the same size before I do and by the way in the crimp that it had was like this right here that's how the crimp on the old power strand line was it was like that so there was really nothing I could do about it but like cut it here and that's how much material you lose um so yeah and I mean honestly I know that looks like more than it is but this definitely went down further on the old one so because that's how much I had left and there's about yeah there's about that much in there so there's actually that much still in there plus that much we cut off so yeah now I couldn't get it to stop leaking I've replaced these hose clamps several times there's two hose clamps on there actually um yeah I've tried tightening them I've tried sanding that out I've tried beating it out to make it a taper uh, the only thing I didn't try was bead rolling it but I don't have a bead roller and that was more expensive than this line so I just said forget it I'll buy a new line um, plus you get this new fitting the only thing is is uh oh great well I'm now I gotta fight that down hopefully that won't be too bad but um the only thing to remember whenever you're doing this is if you're gonna replumb it like I did which I don't recommend just recommend go ahead and replacing the line it'll cost you less time and, and money in the long run um because this little cap for this power this steering box won't go over it because as you can see I don't know if you can see okay it goes over that line that's what kind of holds this in place and covers up that rag joint right there I don't know if you can see that rag joint but that's what covers up that that rag joint and um so that protects that from wearing out quite so soon. Obviously, I didn't have it, you know, installed because, uh, well, I couldn't with the gigantic rubber line that I put back. But, yeah, and just so you know, if you want to do what I did and, you know, replumb it to your specifications, just know that it won't. this won't work and you'll just have to leave that off. I'm not sure if that causes any issues as far as, long, or as, far as longevity. But um, I just recommend, you know, just basically just replacing the line it's just going to be easier um so yeah uh and something that you're going to want to note here is that this is also a new pump the whole problem that i have with this power setting is that it locked is that one of these lines busted loose while i was driving and it caused the pump it caused the pump failure so uh yeah i have since replaced the line that was causing the issue which is the high pressure line and um yeah so this thing's got so many miles on it that pretty much whenever you do stuff on it you just got to replace it if you got high mileage vehicles like this one uh if you're having to do a job like this just save yourself the time save yourself the effort just go ahead and replace some stuff uh because i mean it's they've, they've already lasted 350,000 miles i mean really how much longer were they gonna last if we're honest with ourselves so anywho uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get back to it and I'm gonna get this this old line out and I'm gonna get the new one installed and then I'll show you exactly uh, how to do it so yeah so as you can see I pulled my old piece out right here and uh, this is something that I personally will hang on to um, I don't know why I may throw it away I don't really know yet well I'll decide on that later but but uh, Whenever I, I didn't even notice this, but uh, I got this plug with it, um, and this right here actually I figured out what it does. 
it goes up on the bottom of the pump to keep the fluid from running everywhere. So if you want to save your fluid, put this plug on there right whenever you take the line off, and you'll be okay. It's just a little yellow plug. It's kind of like this. It's got whatever that writing is on it. Pretty simple little piece. Um, I'm going to put it in here with the rest of my plug so they have a transmission dipstick plug. Uh, that's the only two I have, but trust me, those things save you. Uh, they save you in fluid. Fluid costs money. I just spent $76 on transmission fluid that if I had a plug, I wouldn't have quite needed as much. So, yeah. Um, let's get this line installed. Uh, so I'm going to try to do this with one hand. <laughs> not sure how well it will work. I'm not sure what you guys will be able to see, but... Basically, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to explain to you how I'm going to do it. So, so for simplicity's sake, so I'm going to take this line like this, and this is how it goes up in the truck. So I'm going to get this in and I'm going to start threading in this fitting right here into the into the pump. Then I'm going to take these two tabs that I put on here for my other lines. They didn't, they didn't come with this one. You have to transfer them. So make sure you do that. And I'm going to go ahead and bolt it to the bottom of the truck. Alright. And then from there I'm going to put on my rubber line which which is not blocked off but <laughs> it very well could be um, because of that plug that I just talked about. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So like I said, installing this is pretty straightforward. I got it all installed. Um, I don't have a hose clamp on the bottom of the pump just yet, but it is on the line. Make sure that you do that before you install it. It's going to make a loop like that. That's okay. Don't worry about that. That's so that if it does mess up on one end, you can go back and redo it. Pretty much. That's pretty much the reasoning for that. Um, but this can't really go down anymore. So this is going to be its final resting place. Getting this bolt in. Okay. Focus. I'm going to focus. 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 Okay. So getting this bolt in right here is always kind of a fight. Um, I lost this one. So I ended up replacing it with a grade 8. Uh, but yeah. Just get these two bolts in, and you're done, basically. As long as it's all buttoned up over there, and make sure that you put that hose clamp on your uh, thing there. And clean up this mess, too, so that you know if you have any leaks. Uh, it's hard to tell whenever there's a bunch of leftover power steering everywhere. Just do your best to wipe it up, and uh, you'll be good. You'll be good. That'll work out. Hey, and I did get a transmission installed. There's just no transfer case drive shafts, or none of the electrical. It's just a transmission right now. So I've got a lot of work on my hands today, so I'm going to try to cut this video a little short. Um, yeah, I think I'll pretty much get the gist. I'm going to get that hose clamp on, and then I'm going to go over filling, and then we'll be done. Alright, so real quick, I want to talk about filling. Um, you can use automatic transmission fluid to refill your power steering pump, but whether you're going to buy power steering fluid or just use that, whatever, it doesn't really matter, it's all hydraulic fluid. But uh, you're going to pretty much fill it up until... It is at the full cold sign. Now, it is going to go down. All right, it's going to get pumped through the lines and through the gearbox and all that, so you're going to lose some fluid. So as you turn the steering wheel and all that, keep a good watch on it. Make sure that nothing dumb is happening, and you'll pretty much be okay. I know that's very vague, but you'll pretty much be all right. Uh, just make sure that it's nice and full, and whenever you're finally done and you've bled it, and it's nice and hot, make sure that it just says full hot. Okay, so the full cold is the bottom one. Do you see where the arrows are? And uh, come on, I wish this stupid camera would focus. It won't focus. Anyway, just make sure that it's at that at that little bit at the bottom. Look, it finally focused. Make sure it's at that little bit at the bottom, and then whenever it's hot, make sure it's up here, and then you'll pretty much be all right. All right, so we... Okay, so there's Cookie. I do Cookie. I do Papa Dog. Hi, Papa. Anyway, so uh, 
we got this thing done. We got the power stream work, working on it. And uh, we actually got the transmission and transfer case all back in it. The reason that we had it back out again, and I never went over the story the first time, but I think that's actually going to be next week's video. Um, and I think I'm going to put that one as a buffer between us finishing the, the, the next video I have coming out for that, which has to do with these steps. So I'm not sure how good of a video it's going to be. I'm trying to make it the best that I can. Um, so anyways, guys, so yeah. Basically, whenever you get it fired up and all the fluid running through it, just move the steering wheel back and forth, drive it, uh, make sure that you wash the fluid, make sure that it's topped off, don't let it run low, and uh, yeah, it'll eventually bleed itself out uh, whenever as you're driving it, and it'll be fine. Hey, your papa. Hey, your papa, dog. Hey, your papa, dog. Hey, your papa. Hey, your papa, dog. Hey, your papa. Hey, your watch. Anyways, guys, so I want to thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.